Hey guys, it's Carl. Brand new iPhone 14 Pro this time. I actually just did a video on the iPhone 14, which I will leave linked up this way for you to check out. But this is all around the new space black iPhone. I know all the hype is around the deep purple, which we'll have, we'll get to that in a second, which is the 14 Pro Max. But this is the one that I wanted to see. And of course you can see right off of the top of the box, the biggest feature or one of the biggest upgrades is the dynamic island. And I think Apple missed out on a key naming scheme. I'll give full credit to Nick here. It should have just been called island. I, lowercase i. You Apple geeks get it. So quickly, we will take a look at what's inside. And in terms of the box design, it's the same slimness, but uh, for anyone that's a true Apple geek, you can see that there's a difference in color because typically before the Pro boxes were in black, but uh, this time around, the Pro models just have white boxes. So maybe Apple is saving on ink. Maybe um, they're moving away from black boxes. We're talking about box color here. That's how geeky people get about their Apple stuff. But let's take a look inside and quickly lifting this up, you can see the space black. It just looks so, so clean right off the bat. It's uh, minimal, you can tell I'm dressed in all black. Black is the way to go. I think this is my favorite color, mostly because I don't like purple and uh, I'm still waiting for that mythical day Apple drops an orange iPhone. It's gonna happen and I will be in Cupertino for that, I promise you. Inside of the box, we just have the standard stuff. You know, I gotta say it, designed by California. In Apple, we have the user manuals, warranty info, sadly no black Apple stickers. We are stuck to the white ones across the board and the same charging cable that we've seen now for almost ever. I would have loved to have seen USB-C at least make its way onto the Pro models just like we have on the iPad Pro, I know that the iPad Air technically has it as well, but we are still stuck with the lightning port at the bottom of iPhone 14 and 14 Pro. So with that out of the way, I'm quickly gonna take a look at 14 Pro Max as well, just to show the size difference because we have 6.1 versus 6.7. And of course, that new unique color that I still can't get through. I, I still don't like the purple, but uh, I know a lot of people love it. And it is a deep purple. It has this nice sheen to it, but for whatever reason, I just still can't get on board. So exact same things on the inside as well. And I'm wondering, are the Apple stickers the same size on the Pro models? Am I gonna geek out about stickers? Are they different? What is your thought, Nick? Probably the same. Exact same size stickers, just the excess region around the 14 Pro Max is slightly larger. So um, no uniqueness on the stickers, but that's okay. And plastic off, this is where you can get the key size difference. So the biggest reason I chose to go for the 13 Pro Max, I'll kind of bring them all up side by side, is solely for the battery life. I prefer something to last the entire day. And I think for size preference, it really is up to you if you prefer, I guess, the larger size phone. The only difference between the Pro Max and the Pro versions will be the battery inside. So that's really up to you, which of course you'll pick, and of course, the price. So let's get things straight. These are very expensive phones. They didn't actually increase from last year. So when the 13 Pro came out, that is the same starting price for the 14 Pro. So this starts with still 128 gigs. I know that's the starting size option for the 14, but at least for the Pro models, I think they need to at least start at 256. That's just me being a bit nitpicky, but for $999, thousand bucks, that's entry level model, 128 gigs for the Pro, or for the Pro Max, you're looking at 1099. On the Canadian side, 1399 for entry level and 1549. We are really getting shafted by our dollar exchange. Like that's almost like a 40% increase in price. And once you start adding on storage space, so I have the one terabyte models here, so I have the maxed out models, you are looking at prices over $2,000. So with this exact model here, this exact spec, we're looking at 2239 Canadian, and with tax, that's $2,530 for a phone. So I know that they're super expensive. Um, I would never recommend getting one terabyte option unless um, 
you've just got oodles of money and you've already made your pre-order, you're probably not watching this video, but that is the Pro Max. I quickly wanted to talk about accessories. I just wanted to share one of my favorite ones because if you have a $2,000 phone, you probably want to protect it. This is the Pataka Mag Easy Case 3. You can see that it's a matte carbon fiber case, which I love, and a nice little raised edge around the camera. So when you put down your device, the camera lenses aren't scratching against the table or whatever surface you have it on. And you can see how seamless this case is. It's pretty clean, pretty minimal. And you can also get a little sneak peek at Dynamic Island on the 14 Pro Max, which we'll get to in a second. It is also MagSafe enabled, and they have a bunch of different MagSafe accessories, like this nice little MagSafe wallet. And what I actually like, it has the little hole punch cut out in the front to slide your cards up and down compared to the one on Apple, which actually is in the back, which means you actually have to take out the wallet or take off the wallet from your phone to slide up your cards, which is kind of annoying to be honest. It just makes things way easier. And with this case, you just have that peace of mind that your phone will be protected. So if you're interested, I will leave a link down below. And especially when you compare it to some of the pricing for what Apple charges just for their basic silicone cases, I think you get a ton of value for this. So definitely worth checking out. Okay, so for the rest of the 14 Pro line, you can see right off the bat, this is kind of more linked to the display or the home screen. You can actually change that, that's more related to iOS. But one of the main features coming to the 14 Pro is the always on display. So if I actually wait for this to time out, and you can get a little sneak peek of Dynamic Island, you can actually see now the phone is off. You can still see the time and of course any widgets that you would have enabled on your home screen. So that's kind of cool. This runs at about one hertz. It shouldn't affect battery life too much. And technically when you place the phone down or if you have an Apple Watch and you're away from your phone, the screen will turn off completely just to save a bit of extra battery. But I know people have been dying for an always on display. We now have it on 14 Pro. Going on to the main display, so obviously they included a ton of wallpapers to really highlight the dynamic island. And that is one of the new features. In all honesty, it does provide some nice extra little animations. It doesn't give you any extra value other than maybe quickly seeing what's happening. So one of the key apps that we tested that on was actually in clock. If we quickly start a timer and then swipe up, that timer display will now go to the dynamic island. And if you choose to say play music, you'll have an extra little control when you change things like say face ID, it'll prompt you within dynamic island, all of those animations built in. Like I said, they're sleek, they're sexy looking. Is it gonna really make the biggest difference in your life? Probably not. In terms of the display, numbers wise, they look similar, of course, in terms of size. So 6.1 and 6.7, like I mentioned for the Pro Max, that is the same as the 13 Pro, 13 Pro Max as well. It actually has a 1% better screen to body ratio. I do think that's mostly due to the dynamic island, the bezel sizes or the bezel thickness looks the same on my eyes. In terms of brightness, 1000 nits, which is the same across the board, but for HDR content, 1600 nits, which is better. And for outdoor content, you can get up to 2000 nits of peak brightness, which just means this phone will become easier to see when you're using it outside. In really well lit conditions, it will just be simpler to see what's going on on your iPhone. The 14 Pros also have ProMotion, which means it has a 120 Hertz refresh rate, which I wish we saw over on the iPhone uh, 14, the standard line, but it's still reserved for the Pro models. And internally, we have the new A16 Bionic, which is the first chip built on a four nanometer platform. Apple is claiming some heavy numbers, 40% better than the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 platform, which is the flagship found on most Android phones, and 20% better energy performance or energy efficiency compared to the A15 Bionic found on the older 13 Pro. So obviously I'll be testing that out more as I go in depth. My initial hands-on, just actually like both devices, they're both really quick, both really snappy to be honest. The second biggest change in terms of numbers is coming to the camera. We still have a 
triple camera setup, but we now have a brand new main camera sensor, which is a whopping 48 megapixels. And with that extra information in the sensor, we actually have slightly different focal ranges. So we still have the traditional 12 megapixel ultra wide, but instead of just the standard one and three times for telephoto, we have a two times telephoto crop in addition to that three times, of course, with that telephoto lens. And in terms of video, which I still think iPhones have the best in-class video for smartphones, we have a couple extra features. So the first, which is actually the same coming to the 14s, is the new cinematic mode. So that just provides extra stabilization for all your shots. Think of um, a gimbal for a GoPro. We can also record in cinematic mode at 4K at 24 frames per second. So I think a lot of filmmakers will be happy with that option. And I guess one of the last features that we saw is it is now based around an eSIM, but that's technically only in the US. So since we're up here in Canada, we actually still have the physical slot. That's the same on the standard 14 line as well. So I'm curious, there's a lot of back and forth on eSIMs. I know it's not as easy as simple. I'm someone that travels a ton. It's just so much easier to kind of pop in a new SIM card. I don't have to go through a carrier. And especially in Canada, the support for eSIMs is pretty much non-existent. So I do think that's a bit of a personal preference. I think we are lucky up here to still have a physical SIM, but I'm um, curious to hear your guys' thoughts. That is the brand new iPhone 14 Pro and of course 14 Pro Max. I still think I will stick with Space Black this year and probably swap out this Deep Purple Pro Max for a Space Black Pro Max, but color is super, super subjective. Let me know which one your favorite was and um, make sure you're subbed for more iPhone coverage. We'll catch the rest of you in one of my next vids. Peace.